Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast. Well, we're back with Nate, the button pushing machine yeah. over there. <laughs> Nate has a lot of buttons to push to get this this podcast rolling. Many. Many buttons. Many things to click on. <laughs> and if you aren't watching these uh, video formats on YouTube, then all of his button pushing is going to... It's uh, for not. It's for nothing. <laughs> So Nate is making us a request for y'all to go to the Functional Bodybuilding page on YouTube and check us out. Yeah. And check out our cool new sweet hoodies yes. and sweatshirts. Yes. Thank new you, episode Lake every Girl. Friday at 11. Plus, we're going to have a podcast 2.0 coming out relatively That's soon. Right. Yeah. Which will be our second. Might, well, might be out the, by what's the, the time. Drop, what's the drop date on this episode? It might be out by the time this comes out. Probably will be. We need to yeah, have we a, talk about we that. need to have a meeting, another meeting. Um, but yes, and that would be another reason to head over there to the YouTube channel. Sati's bringing the topic for the day, so I'm going to pass it, kick it, kick it on over to her to introduce what we're talking about. That's right. We are talking about fitness in today's social media landscape. Mm-hmm. So. For some context, we've recently expanded our own marketing onto TikTok. You can go follow Marcus Philly on TikTok if you aren't already. You're on Twitter now, Philly Marcus. I'm going to put a few plugs here. (laughs) Yeah. I wonder, can we change that to Marcus Philly on on, on, uh, Twitter? Twitter? I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe. That'd be that'd make more sense. That was actually the first platform like, I ever got on many, yeah. many, many years ago. We're just on your super old account over there. It was weird. I was in uh, just sorry for the tangent here, but I was in medical school, and uh, I remember none of the other platforms were really there. I mean, Facebook was around, but don't, Instagram may not have even been a thing yet. But anyway, my, I was with my friends. Like we were out one night, and they were like tweeting like where they were and stuff. And I was like, "What are you doing?" They're like, "Oh yeah, just." tweet this to tell, it was like tweet use twitter to like tell people where you're at mm. i was like well that seems dumb <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> that seems like a bad idea is, why would we do this i was like okay i guess i want to know where everyone is <laughs> i got twitter and never really got into it i think i started maybe a little tweeting around that time but yeah anyway go ahead okay well in the expansion to different social media platforms and with our recent content strategies that we've been employing on Instagram and YouTube Shorts, we've basically been trying to really get better at making videos more strategically to capture attention and provide our message and make our message very clear to people. It's something we're always working on on the marketing side, but it has brought up a lot of just interesting, I don't know what the plural of phenomenon is, phenomena, phenomena about, that's a funny word, phenomena, (laughs) about what it's like to try to convey thoughtful, useful, often nuanced fitness messaging in a landscape where you have basically three seconds for someone to make a snap judgment about what you're saying and how that applies to them. Yeah, it's it's tricky. It's tricky and we're we're not experts at it by any means, but we're learning along the way. Um, so do you want to give a, an example of when you think we did it really well and when we missed, maybe it missed the mark a little bit recently that comes to mind? Yeah. Well, I'll give a few different examples of some recent posts that we have put up that have gained some traction. So one is kind of the hilarious one, which was like the super <laughs> suggestive <laughs> landmine setup, which yeah, that's right. if, if you're not on Instagram, just trust me, it was suggestive. Um, sliding a barbell between two plates as Mm -hmm. a great way to set up a landmine. And I felt like that did a good job because it was kind of playful and it definitely caught attention, but there was also a useful fitness tip that we were providing as well as one of your favorite landmine moves, which has been super impactful for people. So that kind of rolled it all into like a short little package. But um, there have been some other ones where we're kind of finding our way through and Mm -hmm. then the other one that was like a little bit more controversial was we used a hook, which if you're not familiar with the hook, it's like just the first couple seconds of the video designed to ca- get people to stop scrolling. That's the only purpose of that. Yeah. And the hook was you handling raw liver 
And then our message was Fond- hey, fondling, fondling, fondling some raw, <laughs> Again, juicy, some glistening content. liver. <laughs> but the message was, hey, you don't have to eat this, but we do suggest a protein yeah. packed breakfast. So if you aren't eating liver for breakfast, try swapping some cereal for a protein source and, right, you know. Yeah, it, I think the hook was you don't have to eat liver. But you might have to try something. If you want to change your body, you might need to try something new. Yeah. 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 So. It's and, there, and then there were like, what, 100 comments just about immediately, liver. Immediately. Just about liver. About liver and how it was gross and how it was like, how do you cook your liver? Yeah. And... Many people immediately unfollowed. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But it just kind of really brought home for me how difficult it is to not just from our side of trying to convey these messages, but if you're a fitness enthusiast out there or someone who's trying to learn about health, fitness, nutrition, how difficult it is to sort through these messages and have the mindset of how you take something and put it to use for yourself in a way that's often not a black and white situation. Yeah. Yeah, and then... How can you like, and and this this might take the conversation too too much of a different direction, but I have found myself more lately than ever like, and and Instagram seemed to be a place where this wasn't as much the case. Like when I first explored TikTok about three years ago, I saw that this was like how the platform performed and and manipulated me, but. You know, the TikTok scroll, like scrolling rabbit hole was, was deep. Mm -hmm. I would just go and like, I would spend three to five seconds on each video, but like I could be there for an hour just like scrolling. And when I'd snap out of it, I'd be like, holy smokes, like this thing just sucked me in, you know, where I didn't feel that as much with Instagram. I felt like I had more control and then now it's the same. Yeah. It's like I pop into somebody's reel And then I'm just like, you know, scrolling like, and it's so hard for me too. Cause like I will, in the course of a day, I might be doing some very unrelated tasks for business, but I want to reference something on social media because that was where I had the idea or I had a DM from somebody and I open the app and I lose 15, 20 minutes cause I somehow get wrapped up into the, the scroll. Same. And so it's like, this is a place I want to communicate to people. We want to communicate to people. It's one of the best places that we have to communicate to people. And it's such a slippery freaking slope. You know, it's like, hey, come to Instagram or TikTok to see our content and uh, try not to get sucked in for 30 <laughs> minutes to an hour. Right. And, now you stop, know. put it down and go move. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so anyhow, that that's just my one additional piece to this where it's like we're mindful of like, how do we effectively communicate concepts use the whatever strategies we you know have at our disposal to get people's attention but also back it up with good content and then hopefully not just feed into this time warp that people walk themselves into or swipe themselves into knowingly many times a day yeah so question for you As a fitness educator who's been at this for a while, have you noticed a difference in the way people talk about concepts or the way people make judgments about concepts or the way people are open or not open to different educational pieces of content that we might put out there because of the social media landscape changes? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a lot more, I think, Maybe this is a product of just reaching more people and growing into new audiences, but um, maybe that don't have they don't have the context on where we've come from in the last ten years of, you know, being on different social media platforms and coaching. Um, but there's absolutely like a lot more uh, quick and negative reactions and comments that get made on all the different platforms, and it's like there's this. Uh, it's almost like showing your disagreement or raising, you know, like raising questions, not even questions. It's like 
showing opposition to something is like, I don't know, somehow like uh, a desirable trait, like in to, for, in action for people to to have. It's like, oh, I got in there and I like show that those 15 yeah. posts what's up by yeah. like you know calling it out for some bullshit mm-hmm. and it's like you know you might have called out this aspect of it for bullshit but like what's the message that's positive in there you know and uh and what's the message that really is going to help that person make a shift that is valuable um so that that part has definitely escalated and it and it's certainly escalated on some platforms more than others you know, we also like are on YouTube and we put out YouTube content and there's, I think because, uh, I don't know exactly why it is, but you know, there's, there's a bit more long form feedback that <laughs> shows up there. Um, which is also feels like a flex move for certain people like, Hey, look, I can jump onto a marginally big account. I can make a comment that has a lot of I've wrote a lot of things and it's going to get some visibility people might see it um so yeah it's it's like a place where people are able to feel like they're being seen and known and specifically when they like come in with contrarian ideas or you know they are calling people out for something that they deem to be, you know, inaccurate or false or misleading or, you know, wrong or whatever. Yeah. And especially it seems like over time, the different platforms and not just one of them, many of them reward controversy more than something that might be a little bit more positive yet milk toast. Mm-hmm. So if something is a hot button issue or it, uh, immediately provoke strong reactions on either side. That's going to get a lot of comments, and that's going to boost it to more people, and then sure, that's yeah. going to feed itself. So, hence the liver. Hence the liver. <laughs> hence the fondling of liver. <laughs> right. So, then, I guess, what in your eyes is the place for content that might be useful but less controversial? Yeah, it's a. It's like this balance. It's like I got to do enough controversial stuff or stuff that's just like grabbing attention and then mix in something that's like this is really, you know, just a, a strong message about what we believe in. And the viral content got us a thousand followers out of those thousand, probably only 60 are going to stick around to read the, the really valuable message. But that's OK. Like, yeah. We'll take those, you know. Six percent, um, and I, I, I don't. I'm just gonna share about a creator that's out there that I know. We know personally, um, Amir, who makes, uh, who's had you know, two couple different social media platforms really grow a lot in the last couple of years. He's had some really viral content that is like just pure humor based. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, and actually, some of his viral content is just his amazing, his amazing. A movement ability too but he's he made a couple of videos it was like you know the the concept was like if we moved in real life the way we do in the gym it would look like this and it's like doing household chores with like perfect form and like you extreme know extreme fitness extreme setup. fitness setups. It's, it's really it's hilarious yeah. this is at beard the best you can be by the way if you want to yeah beard the best you can be and you know one of his videos got like six million or it was like shared on espn or something mm-hmm. like that and you know that gets out to 10 million people whatever yeah. and um and so he'll have like he'll cycle through like he's not putting out like funny humorous like click clickbait you know videos every day it's like you'll have one of those and then it's like you know two posts about cars functional mm-hmm. range conditioning which in all, all due respect like it's pretty boring. It's like, it's not flashy. <laughs> you know, it's like... It's a man uh, moving his arm real slow. Yeah. It's like, I mean, he's got to speed it up to like 10 times speed for it to look like for he's actually moving. it to even moving. fit in what the algorithm <laughs> yeah. lets you post. Yeah. Um, but there's a strong message behind it that he believes in and he wants to share with people. And there's going to be a certain percentage of people that, you know, follow him that want to read that. But there's a larger percentage that don't care. They're just like, when are you coming out with the next funny video that's going to allow me to just, you know, get my laughs in for the day and 
and or copy your, you know, your creativity because I want to make my own. Um, gosh, I don't even remember what the question you asked was, but it, <laughs> it definitely got me thinking that there's like, there's this balance. Oh yeah, the balance of like, you got to get people's attention and then you got to share good mess, you know, strong messages that don't rely on, you know, attention grabbing and maybe there's a perfect way to blend both and that's what we're, that's the that's the balance we want to find it's like hey let me get your attention by you know rubbing some liver between my fingers and then hey but you don't have to eat liver but the message here is you're gonna have to maybe change something about what you're doing and a great place to start is getting protein in for breakfast you may have to swap out cereal for you know, sausage or for chicken or for something that you would otherwise not think is a breakfast food, but it could have a big profound impact on your body. And, you know, if someone ever looks at you and says, ew, like you're eating chicken for breakfast, just say, hey, don't yuck my yum. That's right. Isn't that a good line? It's a great line. <laughs> Sati killed it. Yeah. So one thing that I just saw is that a lot more people are using TikTok as a search engine and hmm. they're using that in place of Google because it makes sense in a lot of ways. If you do a Google search for something, it depends on what you're looking for, but a lot of times you're gonna find an AI generated weird article of nothing or something from 2020 when you're searching for a feature for software that was released two years later. So mm. it's not necessarily as relevant of the moment as TikTok can be, but the downside can be, of course, TikTok is ripe with misinformation. And I also want to add my own spin on TikTok in particular, which is I'm finding my way through TikTok and then probably hasn't optimized <laughs> for what I like particularly, but I think Instagram is more and more promoting this style of content too, which is there's just a lot more negative feeling in general content where it's like content that makes you feel bad about yourself in certain ways or people kind of yelling at you about what to do and not to do and much more in your face content that's like um, controversial or pushing your buttons intentionally. So as a fitness content consumer, how do you go about either finding or filtering through that type of information to find something that you might take value from? Mm. Well, I mean, I, first off, I have the, uh, I have the good fortune of having been studying fitness for a really, really long time. So um, I'm not, that doesn't make me immune to like getting caught up in just like trends and things that are like, you know, what you're the, the type of content that we want people to be able to filter through, but I definitely I'm actively seeking you know answers to curiosities and questions, um, and I've established like these are the sources that I kind of trust, uh, not just from what they've shown me on social media, but like what I've seen of them in other you know other areas like in editorials that they've written, in books that they've published, in videos that they've put on to YouTube that are long form education content. Uh, so that's how I end up like, that's where I start my searches, you know, on social media. Um, I think the other things that like, I'm also drawn to are like, you know, if somebody provides like, uh, you could say like, there's layers to solutions, you know, there's there's like the surface layer of solutions, which is like, hey, like I really need like, I need some workout ideas and, oh, that person's got a new movement. I'm going to try that movement. That's like layer number one. You know, layer number two would be like, I need some fresh training ideas. Um, oh, this person's talking about like a movement pattern split or some, you know, like way of putting together a training session. Mm hmm and then, oh, this person's talking about like, a, like they're doing a deeper dive on a training methodology and approach that, you know, so that's like three layers. And I'm, I think I'm mindful to sort of like, I, I wanna go for deeper layer stuff. 
and I can kind of see like, oh, that's cool. Like that surface layer, like, okay, just like put in the memory bank or whatever, but like, I'm not going to spend time on that. I'm not going to really, like, I don't need another kettlebell exercise right now for myself. Like I need something different, you know, whereas you could be like, I really need to get like some new exercise ideas. And so focus on that and, and seek them out. And those might be the five creators that you really follow. And then after some time, you should, you should realize like, I don't need to follow this person anymore. I don't need another kettlebell exercise idea. I actually need to understand how to put that together in my training a little bit more. Cause like right now I'm a little bit lost. So, you know, this might be, and as, as I'm saying this, like, this has got to be like part of our content strategy. And it is, it's like, we're giving different layer solutions to people, you know, probably more of the layer one stuff because that's a little bit easier to consume and you can go and immediately try it. And then the layer two stuff is like, okay, for those people who really want to stick around and know what's going on. And then that layer three are like, those are people like, I'm interested. Like, I really want to know more and they're going to maybe be long-term customers possibly. Um, and perhaps we save some of that layer three stuff for f- platforms that you can really educate on better Mm -hmm. you know like if i've got three seconds to teach you something on instagram but i potentially have three minutes on youtube or two and a half minutes on youtube then maybe we'll save that for a different platform and then really there's like the deep content that we can do which is when you've purchased our con our programs you're in our programs and then there's videos that are delivered to you weekly it's like okay that that doesn't that's not going to go well on instagram yeah you know people are going to totally scroll past that it's got a better chance of having an impact on a customer who's already bought in and it's going to keep them in longer and and help them see results faster yeah and some platforms lend themselves more to going more in depth like we have long form and short form youtube content we have long in-depth uh email articles that we send out weekly so those are opportunities to like oh you like this few things on instagram maybe sign up for the email list and then you can go much deeper yeah so how do you suggest people have a bit of a an open mind when they're looking at fitness content to decide whether it would actually work for them? Mm. I guess this gets at the the thinking athlete question that we're we're kind of poking around at. It's like a lot of fitness content is almost designed to be taken at face value like do this, not this. But then how does one learn to either be a skeptic about that or understand more nuance over time? Yeah. I don't know. What, what, what's your take on this? I'd, I'd love to kind of turn it around and just, I want to I hear you answer this question. I think I keep going back to the, the question of, what is my own willingness to be open to new information in the first place? Like, what is my purpose? And I think some of that, especially on different social media platforms, because this isn't a universal approach that I take on all of them, but I think sometimes it's helpful to understand if you're in the mindset of consuming passively or actively seeking. So if I'm on Instagram or TikTok, I'm probably just passively seeking. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I don't really use TikTok as a search engine myself, so that could be a bit of a gray area there. But I think, first of all, understanding what it is that I want to get out of it. And then also there's like a layer of skepticism that I think I just automatically apply to almost everything on social media because I don't know if it's from being in my role behind the scenes and seeing how these things are actually made versus what people perceive of them. But all is not as it appears ever. Mm. Um, So yeah, I think it's, it's kind of a tough question, but I think really just like that, that level of awareness of like what you're looking for, how open are like, are you really seeking information or are you just taking in impressions? And if you're just taking in impressions, then I would have a high guard up for like, is this actually making me feel better or helping me? Or is it time to put this down? Yep. I like that. And unfollowing sometimes too can help. Sure. We were actually 
kind of thinking similar things. I like the way you articulated it. I was thinking, you know, prior to kind of going into these platforms, like ask yourself, do you have a, do you have a question or a problem that you're trying to solve? You know, which would be like, I'm actively seeking answers versus like, I'm just passively here to take in impressions. And that's when it's like, if you have, if you're actively seeking stuff, then it's like, that's an opportunity to go in and, and find, you know, what the questions that you have and if are people answering them and then be open to trying them like, uh, versus like, I'm just here and inevitably somebody, you're going to scroll across something that somebody says something that like, like, Oh yeah, I'm kind of that way too. Like, you know, but you weren't there to like find a solution to that. (laughs) You know, it's like they reminded you that you have a problem or like a perceived problem. And that doesn't mean it's worth trying to fix. Like it might be okay. You know, like, Hey, are you like, do you struggle with like, never wanting to put the chip bag down you're like oh yeah i do that like it's like yeah so does everybody like everyone's just, like <laughs> chips are good you know congrats like, you're human <laughs> yeah but like before you got on here were you worried about that like you know right. it's like oh, you need to go and like make this like you know uh, low calorie chip it's like you're like busting out like the cooking and the baking stuff you're like why am i why am i doing this like this was not what i needed today i yeah. actually needed to just like I was just here to zone out and get some funny content and then, you know, put a timer on me and be like, okay, done, you know? Yeah. And if this, if this one account is constantly making you like question like your food choices and like, you know, like then, yeah, that's the unfollow. It's like, I don't need, (laughs) I'm not unfollow you. Like that's, I don't need to question my food choices right now. I'm actually fine with it. Yeah. I think it's really actually amazing how little content I actually need or want (laughs) like maybe that's not helpful to say since I'm in the literal business of making content (laughs) but I think um and our content I think is an exception I actually enjoy and consume our content and learn a lot from it myself even as we're making it so there's something there but I think that um it's easy to get into sort of like the self-hatred spiral almost of like, yeah, I'm a fitness person. I'm going to follow a bunch of fitness accounts. It's like, okay, now it's a bunch of leggings and butts and now I feel bad about myself. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And now I'm looking for like, you know, what all these girls are doing that I'm not doing. And now I'm comparing myself to everybody. And like, now it's time to unfollow like 20 accounts. So just being kind of conscious of like, is this making me, feel motivated and inspired and providing something of value that I can then go and take away and use for myself? Or is it just making me plain feel bad? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that those are good questions for people to be like asking on a regular basis because you could like answer that for yourself. You could make a commitment, unfollow, stay off the platform. And then, you know, you're downloading TikTok again. Yeah. you know <laughs> and you're back on yeah and so you gotta repeat rinse and repeat that cycle yeah and tiktok it's kind of harder to avoid because it's just being fed to you yeah yeah who are some of your favorite people to follow and learn from on social media i kind of refresh every few months you know um i gotta like oh these four three people i'm gonna really follow closely and look at everything that they're doing you know i mean for me following people on social media is not just about like consuming their ideas, but it's looking at how they present their ideas and how they talk on camera and um, just tools like that educators are using. Cause uh, you know, at some degree you're, you're an educator if you're on a, on a platform, like a, like a uh, social media platform, creating content, like you're teaching people you're trying to, or at least one, a lot of the ones I'm following, some people are just trying to entertain, but like for the educators that are out there, like I'm wanting to understand how that, how that works. So I might file, file some, follow somebody who's, you know, not necessarily a fitness educator. They're educating on something else, but I'm like, Oh, how is this like tool or this approach that they're using really, you know, benefiting uh, their audience and how can we maybe use that? Or how could I adopt some language like that in our message so that, I can more effectively communicate and educate people. Um, so that was not, that was, I kind of skirted the, <laughs> the the question. Who pops up on your feed where you're like, oh yay, a post from so-and-so? Well, I mean, on, 
it's so funny. Like with, with Instagram, um, I almost don't even like notice like who the creators are. Like uh-huh. I'm just like, which is pretty bad. It's like, I'm just kind of scrolling through We've stuff. We've really got our work to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but on YouTube, like those, you know, it, it kind of pulls like, you know, so when something new comes out of, you know, from, uh, acquisition.com or Hermosi, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm, I pay attention. I'm like, Oh, what, how is, how is their social media or their content evolving? Right. Yeah. Cause it's evolving really fast, yeah. you know? And it's like almost so fast that like, I'm, I'm just, there's something to learn all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I've kind of been come back to some of his content, but there's a, you know, fitness creator named Jeff Nippard. Yeah. He's, been on YouTube for quite some time. Very big following there. Um, Thomas Delauer, uh, another big fitness nutrition educator on YouTube. And um, yeah, both of them have just really different, but ways of educating and way that they produce their content and the way that they use different visuals and attract people's attention and, um, and, and, and like share really good information. So, yeah. uh, those are like places that I, you know, would trust to seek information of that level, that layer number two, layer number three mm-hmm. versus just like layer one. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way you frame that because it's like you have a level of detachment because you're actually looking at how are they messaging? How are they teaching? How are they educating? How are they presenting information? And I'm sure a lot of that comes from just trying to always improve your own style and always evolve in that area. And I think I'm similar for social media, but it's also, I think, a useful framework for anybody because you can step back and look at not only what the information is, but how is this being presented and is this an effective way for me to learn Mm -hmm. in this medium or not so much? Yeah. Well, cool. Any, any final thoughts on this topic before we wrap it up for the day? Uh, No, it's just one that we're always super curious about. So if anyone has their favorite accounts that you want me to check out. I don't know if you want people to DM you with that, but I'm certainly interested to take a look. (laughs) I always ask people who they learn from on social media and, when I'm doing customer research interviews, I love to ask where people are going for information now. So yeah. let me know. I'm Add interested Satya too. Khan. You can you can DM me that stuff. Absolutely. Okay. 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 All right. See you next week, everyone. We'll see you.